Support for Swan Song is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Continuing on the theme of games proudly proclaiming their presence at the turn of the millennium, this week's title is Sen no Millennium, a handheld adaptation of a somewhat obscure arcade puzzle game. It was developed by Koyosha, published by Bandai, and as you might expect from the title, it was released on March 16th, 2000. I wouldn't expect most viewers to know Koyosha as a developer. They were founded in April of 1996 by Nakamura Hiroshi, formerly of Data East and Technos Japan, and the bulk of the studio's work involved assisting existing development teams with music and sound effects, or graphics conversions for various game ports. The initial incarnation of Koyosha was around from its founding in 1996 to 2012, and over the 15 years the studio ran, they were involved with the development of over 300 games. In 2016, the studio was relaunched following Nakamura's three-year stint at the mobile and browser game developer 7. Their website is still up and running today, claiming that the newest title they've been involved with is Super Robot Tyson T for the PS4 and Switch, providing assistance with graphics data production. I was surprised to hear that they were not only responsible for developing the Serial Experiments Lane bootleg CD-ROM game, which came on the anime's official soundtrack, but they were also directly responsible for producing the anime's background music. How cool. Senno was originally released for the Super Kaneko System arcade hardware in 1998 by Koyosha and Kaneko. The name is a pun on the word Senno, meaning brainwash. Normally, this word is written with the kanji for wash and brain, but in this case, they swapped out the kanji for wash with another sen, the kanji for line. This is fitting for the game as it mashes up the falling block puzzle subgenre, like you'd know from Tetris or Puyo Puyo, with the mechanics from Pipe Dream. I feel incredibly old having to explain this, but Pipe Dream, also known as Pipe Mania, was a puzzle game developed for the Amiga in the late 80s, where players had to connect pipes on a grid between an entrance and an exit using randomly dispensed pieces. It was bundled with the Microsoft Windows Entertainment Pack in 1992 and became quite popular. If you're old enough to have used Windows 3.1 or Windows 95, you probably remember this game. If you're a Zoomer, you probably recognize Pipe Dream mechanics as hacking minigames, as popularized by Bioshock, but also seen in other games such as Saints Row 4, Warframe, and Half-Life Alex. But in Japan, much of Pipe Dream's notoriety came from its 1990 arcade port by Video System Co., which was one of the most successful arcade releases of that year. In Senno, instead of being able to place pipe segments anywhere on a grid, they slowly fall from the top of the screen. You can move them left or right, soft drop by pressing down, and rotate pieces clockwise and counterclockwise. Instead of connecting a predefined start and end together, Senno only asks the player to make closed rings with their pipe segments. The more pieces you use in your ring, the higher the score will be. When you close the ring, those blocks get cleared away and any blocks on top of it fall, leading to combo possibilities. That's the basic mechanic behind Senno. I do want to shout out the members of Puzzle Wednesdays, which make up the small competitive Sen no community playing online over Fightcade. God knows how many actual arcade casts for this game are out there, but it makes me so happy to see that people are still playing this and giving it love in 2023. It's been really cool to be able to watch VODs from their event and see what high-level competitive play of this game looks like. Definitely check them out if this game has you curious. Sen no Millennium is a great little package, consisting of three single-player modes and a multiplayer mode. The first single player mode is the equivalent of an endless mode, where you gain levels as you clear rings and play until you fail. The first few levels are pretty chill, slowly introducing players to the game and gradually adding more pipe segments to the randomizer's pool as you climb levels. But then, just as you're starting to get comfortable, the game shows no mercy and it starts cutting out parts of your well, rearranging the shape of the field you're playing on. This quickly gets a lot more challenging. You could somewhat reliably build large rings around the perimeter of the rectangular well in the original Senno to clear the whole board at once, and you quickly realized that that was going to be the dominant strategy for racking up points in single player. Hell, the game even had a Senno counter, specifically to count how many of these rings you had cleared. But cutting out parts of your well acts as a direct counter to that. You'll at least need to adopt what your most efficient clearing strategy is on a per layout basis instead of repeating the same strategy for the entire length of the game. 
The second single player mode is the Send No Stadium mode, where you pick a character and face off against the full cast of 9 original characters in a versus match taking place on the default well shape. Unlike in the original Senno, in this iteration of the versus mode, each player has a gauge which fills as you clear away rings, and upon filling this gauge, you'll unleash your selected character's special attack at your opponent. Much like other versus modes in the genre, these attacks range from minor cosmetic setbacks to absolutely being backbreaking to the opponent player. I assume this is also how the link cable multiplayer mode works, but I can't verify that myself. The third single player mode is a puzzle solving mode where you're given a fixed board state and need to figure out how to completely clear it using a predetermined set of pipe segments. There are multiple difficulty levels in this mode, so it can double as both a tutorial for the game and a challenging set of puzzles for higher level players wanting to hone their skills. This mode is entirely new for Send No Millennium, and it's a nice add. I suppose that all of these modes are technically pretty standard fare for the falling black puzzle genre, but it's nice to me that the endless and versus modes at least try to evolve on the formula from the arcade game instead of being straight up ports of the arcade version. And it's also nice that the Wonderswan got an entirely original mode in the process. As far as I'm aware, only one other game in the Sendno series was ever released, and that was a freeware Windows 95 and 98 port released in September of 2000 on the Japanese software download website Vector. According to the notes I can find, it was intended to become the definitive version of Senno, and Koyosha had planned to release many updates for it. But looking at it today, the final build they shipped still pales in comparison to either the original arcade release or Senno Millennium. It only featured the Endless mode, and it didn't have any of the well layout changes that I found in the Wonderswan version. It's a shame the series didn't really go anywhere after that. Senno Millennium reminds me a lot in intent to Puyo Puyo Tsu, which I've already covered on the channel. Both of them intended to counter easily exploitable strategies that made gameplay far too repetitive. And while Puyo Puyo Tsu propelled Puyo Puyo to massive success, Sen no Millennium sadly fell a bit short. I hope that one day if Koyosha doesn't have much going on, that they'll pick up the Sen no concept again and give it another try, because I think there's a lot of untapped potential here. 